Good afternoon, my name is Lloyd Stevens. Today I'm going to be talking about um, a brief summary of an article called Lots of Trouble, written by Marielle Segarra. So a brief overview of what I'm going to talk about today. First, I'm going to talk about absorption costing, what it is, the formula of how it's calculated. Uh, the next is I'm going to give a specific example in the auto industry where they use absorption costing to increase short-term profits. Uh, finally, some consequences that the author discusses about um, what the auto industry giants did, as well as some recommendations. So, next slide. So I really like this cartoon. It's kind of funny and silly, but it has a lot of truth to it. It has two managers sitting there discussing, we've got to get our clients to think of long-term investments. By long-term, I mean until we, we retire. And this is this, the problem that we have in accounting with agency. Sometimes managers are going to do what's best for them instead of what may be best for the company long term. And this is a big problem that we see um, with the absorption costing. So in absorption costing, the formula, it, what it gives you is a cost per product. And the way that you find this cost per product is you take the fixed cost, the variable cost, the manufacturing cost, and then you divide that by the total number um, of items produced. And this gives you uh, a cost per product. So before the Great Recession in 2008, the, the big three automakers, GM, Ford, Chrysler, um, they used this um, accounting method uh, to boost short-term profits and meet their short-term goals. So they did this by increasing their income statement profits, obviously making their company look more desirable, more profitable. So the way that they did this was they increased inventory, they overproduced. Uh, and if you remember the formula, the numbers of items produced was the denominator. So by increasing inventory, what you get as a result is a decrease in cost per vehicle, um, which therefore makes you look more profitable. Um, they use these to boost short-term revenue to make their company seem more profitable over the short term and meet some of those short-term goals um, in order to receive their compensation. So some consequences that the author discussed of um, this accounting practice that these auto industry companies use was one eroding brand image. It doesn't look good when um, because there was so much inventory and they overproduced, uh, dealers had to discount their cars. So if a car was worth 12,000, they had to sell it for 6,000. Uh, and customers don't like that, it kind of erodes the brand image when they see a vehicle that is being advertised as 12000 and in reality it's sold for 6000 they're going to be less likely to ever pay full price for those vehicles. The next one was a short-term emphasis. Because the managers were focused on meeting those short-term goals to maybe receive compensation, um, that can create uh, this kind of short-sighted focus for the managers to not focus on long-term profitability and what's best for the company long-term. Uh, when you overproduce because of this absorption costing, this racks up what's called excess inventory costs. The cost of storing new cars, maybe replacing tires because they're sitting on the lots for so long. Uh, and these ultimately cut into the profitability of the firm. So some recommendations that the author gives. She recommends recording ex that excess capacity cost. Um, that's gonna help give managers perspective to see uh, whether or not how much these costs are affecting their overall profits of the company. Another one is in using alternative incentives. Big, the biggest problem was managers' bonuses and compensation was based on some of these um, incentives to boost profits short term. And so finding a different way to motivate managers, what can we use maybe customer satisfaction or brand image, focusing on those things um, in order to compensate managers and reward them accordingly. So in conclusion, we talked about absorption-based costing, how it's used um, to create a cost per unit or a cost per product. We talked about how the auto industry, the big three, GM, Ford, Chrysler, use this to um, boost profits and some of the consequences and recommendations um, that the author gave to use instead of overproducing. So are there any questions?